Welcome to another episode of He's Not Done Yet. We are so delighted that you've tuned in with us today. And once again, we are so delighted that you're here today. You know, He's Not Done Yet is a radio ministry that goes out on Victory Radio Station on 100.9, 95.3, and 1530 a.m., and goes out on Tuesday on Faith Talk at 6 p.m. at 99.5. And then, of course, they replay it again on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We'd love to invite you to the First Pentecostal Church. We have church on Sunday morning at 10.30, and we're back on the evening service at 7 p.m. If you're down to one service, I'm telling you, we'd love for you to come and be with us on Sunday Night Live. We would just enjoy you being there. Feel free to text me or call me at 501-339-8017 and let me know, hey, you're coming, and you can sit with me and my family. We'd love for you to, to come. And we also have church on our midweek service on Tuesday night, so if you're having church on Wednesday, you're more than welcome to visit us on, on uh, Tuesday night at 7 p.m., we're at 1401 Calvary Road right here in beautiful North Little Rock, Arkansas. You can also find He's Not Done Yet on He's Not Done Yet.com. He's Not Done Yet.com. Today's scripture comes from Philippians 4 and 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, I love you. I praise you today, God. I pray that it would fall on good ground, Lord. We love you so much. Thank you for being here, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we want to say don't touch that dial. We want you to hang in there. After the music, we got a very special guest and a real good friend of mine, and we'd love for you to stay tuned in. So don't touch that dial. Well, today's a special day. I've got a really close friend of mine, somebody that I've known since I've been here, and uh, it's uh, Brother Bo Cole, and we are so honored that you're here today, brother. We want you to come in and obey the Holy Ghost, and uh, we're just so glad that you're here. Brother, go ahead. My name is Bertram Cole, and I also attend the First Pentecostal Church, and I'm here to testify. To just put it out. I pray that the way God want me to do it, and and, and uh, pray to God that Amen. It reaches out there and touches souls, and and uh, and I just want to uh, just just want to obey God. Well, uh, I'll start with I was born and, and raised in, in uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and and so there was ten of us uh, in my family, and uh, and mom was strict and. Uh, and uh, she made sure that everything was in place and taken care of at, at all times. So really thank, uh, thank the Lord for our God-fearing mother. Amen. And, and, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, I guess uh, you might uh, say that I was uh, uh, maybe poor because uh, during uh, elementary sc uh, school uh, at a certain time of the year, uh, they would uh, they would take me and a few other of the kids shopping. We'd go to J.C. Penney's, and uh, and the guys would get you know maybe a, a coat, uh, two pair of pants, two shirts, and you know, and on and stuff like that is what we would get, and uh, and I was very grateful for that, and and all the kids would know uh, that that uh, would take place because when you got back to school, being poor, you always was kind of you know rough. And you had on something new, then they knew what time it was. So <laughs> you was gonna be teased and uh, made fun of, and so that's what the kids would do. But they didn't understand that I was yet grateful, and uh, and uh, and uh, I, that's when I first started to learn. In your face, devil, uh, God just blessed me. That's all. I'm not gonna be angry, and I'm not gonna be upset about it. God just didn't <laughs> bless me with new clothes. Y'all might be jealous, but anyway, Amen. I, uh, I love the Lord, and and uh, and He's always been there for me when I didn't even know it. Um, I always knew uh, uh, that I had a God-given purpose that was in my life. I always knew that, but uh, I didn't understand uh, what that might be. 
and going on in life and, and, and growing a little bit more, it started uh, at a young age with me with cigarettes, alcohol, and, and uh, smoking pot. It started at a young age. And, uh, and uh, so uh, you could imagine it was a terrible experience uh, starting at such a young age, uh, going through things like that, and uh, all the way up to high school. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't focus well on anything uh, like that. And, you know, being young, you know, and the way I was, uh, school was hard. School was rough for me. And so, uh, mind you, uh, I was uh, going to church uh, all that time uh, and knowing uh, one day that I would get to that. Uh, to that God-given call. One day I would. It seemed like people would always knew, know. Uh, they would say things like, well, God going to do something with you. So they could see uh, maybe something that, uh, you know, that I couldn't see or, or, or didn't understand. And uh, in my Bible church, uh, I got the Holy Ghost. Uh, I, got, I got the Holy Ghost and I spoke in tongue. Uh, for the first time in my life, but uh, uh, it wasn't long uh, being uh, changed uh, as a young man uh, when you didn't get the teaching of the Holy Ghost and things like that. So, so, I, so I remember sp uh, speaking in tongues when I was young, but. Uh, I wasn't taught about growing in the spirit. And so I was just right back in the same environment, going right back to the same environment. Uh, and uh, it got worse pretty much than what it was at first. Uh, uh, and so uh, I was always able to always, you know, figure out or say something and God would put something on me. So all I could say was just shut your mouth, devil. God is still on my side. You know, uh, no matter how things would go, I did I did a lot of fighting uh, because of you know, like the, like I say, the environment that I was in. So uh, long, long story short, uh, I quit school and uh, and I went into a job corps and I took up the trade of uh, welding, the, vo the vocation of welding, and uh, and I was a uh, uh, pretty good at welding, and I did good in Oklahoma City and uh, in Guthrie. And after uh, graduating and, and, and doing pretty good at that place, I moved back to Egypt. I went back home to Pine Bluff. And of course, uh, that was more trouble than it was at first for me. So uh, all I could say was just uh, get back devil because God ain't done with me yet. It was Ooh. always just everything that happened in me and on me, I always had uh, uh, some some fight in me when I didn't even uh, understand a whole lot of, of of what was going on. All I knew was I just needed to do like everybody else, go to school and do this and do that. So after after the job corps and all that stuff, uh, uh, I moved on and went into the U.S. Army. Uh, I went from uh, Fort Knox, uh, to Fort Benning, Georgia, and on to Fort Hood, Texas. And, uh, and uh, I went on to Germany uh, from there to uh, Frankfurt, and uh, I served uh, uh, somewhat time there in Germany, only to learn uh, that God was in all these places just waiting to help me through every storm that I was going through. Amen. And I was going to really go through some. Uh, I was always taught by my grandmother, you know, uh, that it was gonna, it was gonna be hard. Nobody said it was gonna be easy. Uh, now I learned discipline while I was in service, uh, which was a good thing. I really ranked fast too uh, during my stay in service, being sharp like that, and and so uh, and and so that was a good thing. Uh, I also learned about drugs and stronger alcohol when I was in Germany. So the drugs were stronger and uh, while I was there. And I also uh, picked up on uh, 
you know, different drugs while I was there. It just wasn't the alcohol and marijuana and the things I did here in the United States when I got old enough and I went over there uh, 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 to overseas. Uh, there was acid and it was made of paper and there was liquid acid and there was peel acid and, and all these things. And then I learned and uh, about the uh, smoking of the hash. You know, I never knew anything about that till I got there. And uh, smoking uh, the embalming fluid that they would soak into cigarettes or some other kind of tobacco. Uh, you know, God was there with me. It was so many people that I saw. Amen. After using those kind of things, you see them fighting the air. Amen. Losing their minds and things like that. Oh, but this God, hallelujah, he was always there with me. And it, it was much prayer always going out. I had a praying family, and I thank God uh, for that. And uh, I also uh, learned uh, to stand on a death ground at times. Uh, I was in dangerous places a lot, and I knew uh, in my life I could have died a lot, lot of times. There was many times there was a gun to my head, and there was knives to my, to my throat. Man, but God was always there for me. After serving in the armed forces of, for, the, for the time that I served, I moved back to Pine Bluff uh, again and living uh, life like I was. Uh, jail kind of became my second home. Kind of became my second home. And, uh, and so I began to grow bitter and angry uh, even at the world, thinking that, uh, you know, the whole world's against me, you know. And, and, and uh, when you enter drugs and things like that, you know, uh, all kind of things come across your mind. You, you're warring with the enemy at all times. And I was going through things that I didn't understand. So uh, it seemed like, uh, again, it seemed like the world uh, was against me and, uh, and everybody that was in the world. So time would go on a little bit, and, and I got married. And I really didn't allow uh, that marriage to, uh, to work like I should have. And I thought I knew what I was doing, and I thought I had things, uh, you, you know, just right. But, uh, but I didn't do like I, uh, in, in that marriage like I, had, I should have did. And, uh, and the way I came up, I thought that, uh, you know, that was the right thing. But God blessed me uh, with a daughter out of that marriage. And, 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 I, and, and I thank God for that. So, so, I, so I was really blessed with the person that I was with. And like I say, I, I thought I was doing it right. I didn't have the Holy Ghost in, or anything. And so uh, they gave me a more reason after, after I had a daughter. They gave me the more reason to fight even more in the name of Jesus. So, uh, you know, you know, there was more to it. It's just what me and what I wanted. Um, and so, uh, years, years went on and, uh, and, uh, I married again, uh, for the reason of just being, you know, uh, uh, uh I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to be lonely. So, so I married again, uh, and, uh, and after marrying again, that's pretty much when things uh, really began to break me into pieces. Uh, what I did, I married, uh, I married uh, into a marriage that I was uh, uh, now at the age I was a drunk. And, uh, and uh, they was a drunk, so we both drank and we both did drugs. The worst thing you can do. Amen, was what I did at that time. And when things began to really uh, break me into pieces, um, I stepped into another realm that I didn't know about. But during the second marriage, I found out about that crack cocaine and uh, what a spin uh, uh, that was. So uh, I would be, uh, and I was learning to put that, uh, put that crack cocaine onto that marijuana. And now I was smoking it that way, so that was a that was a different high, you know. And so uh, I was really out of control by now. I was really out of control by now, and uh, 
I thought about a lot of times what God might want of me, but I was so busy doing um, what the enemy had me doing and doing what I wanted to do to please myself. And uh, the only thing uh, I cared about was uh, either getting the drinks, you know, just drinking alcohol and things like that, and going to work and getting paid and coming back home to get more drugs and, and, uh, and uh, do what I wanted to do. And uh, so, and uh, uh, my second wife at that time, well, when we first got together, uh, I sent her to, through school and she became a nurse. And RN took a few years, but, uh, and, and, and we struggled hard, so she became a nurse. And sometime uh, when she got off work, she'd come home with, you know, maybe a little bottle, and, uh, you know, for like from a job. And, uh, it was it, it it was liquid in it, and she would draw it up into uh, this needle, and she would shoot it into her arm, and so, and she seemed like she really enjoyed it. And me being a drug addict, you know, uh, I thought it was enjoyable, you know, looking at somebody doing it. So, I you know, I say, hey, give me some of that. Put put that in my arm too. I want I want to see how it feel. But it made me sick to my stomach, whatever it was. I really, I really hated that trip and the way I felt about that. So that was something that was eliminated real quick. And when I was young watching TV and things like that, when I saw people use a needle in their arm, uh, I always saw them the next thing. They thought that they could fly, They'd get on top of a building and jump off. That was on TV, you know what I mean. And, and, and that was just something I was, I was afraid of. And, and I, and I didn't like that anyway. Uh, but I went on further uh, to uh, smoke crack rock. And smoke crack rock out of the pipe. And it was getting worse and worse and worse in my life. And God was trying to do things continually, continually in my life. I, I wasn't paying attention to children or, or, or anything like that, you know. Uh, and I, was, and I was really losing it. I was going on down slowly. I had loved ones to tell me, but why don't you uh, uh, get a hold to the things of God? Why don't you get a hold to, you know, like the Lord and, 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 and live right? And, and, uh, and I would tell them, uh, why don't you mind uh, your own business? I'm not hurting nobody but myself. I didn't realize, amen, I was hurting my family and others that loved me. I was hurting them also. And so things began to wear in on me and take a toll. And so, uh, and so uh, uh, I had picked up the title of uh, a new name of Crackhead, You Crackhead. And that was uh, one thing that uh, uh, Brother Billy, I thought that I'd never do from when I came out of service and saw people that was on that particular drug and what they did. I said, I know, I never, I know, I never, and, and you know the thing like that. But, uh, but I found out, don't, don't never say never. That's right. Don't never say never, man. And so, uh, and uh, I always said that I never do that, but I, but I wind up doing it, and I wind up going through that. But in all that, I still had something in me that I would, uh, uh, but I let the devil uh, take me on a on a bad, bad ride. I, I, I allowed it, uh, him to take me further than I, would, than I wanted to go. And, uh, and I allowed him to cause me to stay out there in the streets later uh, than I wanted to stay. And after things, uh, uh, I should uh, not have been after, things I should have not been missed, I was chasing. I was chasing after a bigger high. I was chasing after, chasing after this. But I wasn't getting after the Lord. And so things was just going on. Uh, uh, life went on. Things was just going on through. And, and so one of the biggest fights uh, I was in uh, was in uh, Miami, Florida, um, where I was standing on death ground. This was one of the biggest 
uh, was one of the biggest uh, first time I felt that I was going to die, that it was going to be over. And uh, I was being surrounded by six or more uh, other men. I, was, I had went to a place I was asked, don't ever go there by yourself. So that I always went with this one other person, and he would take me there, and we'd get well, of what we needed. Miami, Florida was a fast lane for me, or oh, a fast lane. It was too fast. I couldn't keep up. Uh, 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 what they had there was, was twice, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and it was bad. And then, uh, you know, when I say uh, and, and talk about being poor, I, I, I wasn't like a lot of uh, dr uh, drug users and things like that. I wasn't smoking joints, you know, the size of your finger or the size of your thumb, anything like that. I was smoking pen joints because I was poor. I had smoked a little bit, you know. I couldn't afford as much as others did. I wasn't smoking crack rock size of um, top of my fingernail. I wasn't. I was smoking, you know, crack rock this, maybe the size of a of a of a half a baby aspirin, just a little bit of, you know, what they would buy and put on at one time. Hey Amen. It'll take me. I could hold something like that all night. Just poor, you know. So, 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 so things was like that. And uh, after I was surrounded the way I was uh, by those men, uh, uh, they began to uh, uh, began to beat me. You know, one of them had a pistol, and, and uh, uh, they began to beat me with their hands and fists and brother. And uh, and one of them had a pistol. And uh, they had my back against the wall, and uh, and they demanded everything that was in my pocket. They give them everything that was in my pocket, which I didn't have nothing but that little, little, little bit of money I had that I was going to buy some drugs. But I was told not to go over there, and I did. But they wanted everything in my pocket. And, and so they began to whip me with that pistol real bad, and uh, the blood was uh, everywhere. Uh, the holes in my head were was constantly hit, and, and my shirt was soaking wet with blood, and, and I mean, I was just soaked in blood. And uh, I heard one man saying, give me that ring on your hand, and, and, uh, and I was trying to take it off, and I, I was saying, hey, I can't get it off. He said, lick your hand and, 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 and pull that ring off, and, and I did that, and I couldn't get that ring off. And I heard him say, somebody give me a knife, I'm going to cut his hand off. And, oh, you're talking about somebody hollering for the Lord. Amen. But you have to understand, even before this, there were so many other incidents before this and in between that I was in trouble. Amen. You know, with guns and, 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 uh, and uh, fighting and knives, some places I go to, and if the drug dealer was, uh, you know, they could be out there whooping somebody, and I didn't care. I'd tell them, you know, hey, I came for such and such, and, and, uh, and uh, hey, can't you see I'm busy? And I stand there and wait till they got. I stand there and wait. That's how bad it was. On my job, uh, uh, I could get paid, and they'll be right there on my job waiting to pick me up because I didn't got the credit. My check already spent. Uh, and uh, take me to the store. I'd cash it to get me a little something to drink, and, and they'll talk me out of the rest of it because they showed have some with them. Living a, living a poor life, I... I uh, I uh, got so that I, to, to, I got away from everybody, and I and I and I got to myself. And like I say, my head and shirt it was just soaked in blood, and, and uh, I was beat up pretty bad. And uh, I was really crying now, uh, out to God concerning the matter when He wanted to cut my hand off for a ring. And brother, you talking about somebody scared him. And I began to cry out, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And just over and over, I would cry out to God. Because uh, I didn't, I was, I was telling God, God, I don't want to die out here. I don't want to die like this. Don't let me, you know, just, just be put to death out in something like this. And, and so, uh, brother, why they was beating me, the more they beat me, the more I cry out, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I was waiting every time I did. Before this time, cry out to the Lord. He was always there for me. He was always there for me. And the reason I know is when I 
I was at the Baptist church and I spoke in tongues. I didn't know anything about speaking in tongues. I didn't know anything about Holy Ghost. Uh, but uh, but uh, when that did happen, I was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's as far as I got with, you know, like my experience uh, with God, knowing that you know, other than, you know, him always being there for me in all these hard uh, times that I was going through. And uh, all of a sudden, and all that, uh, I saw a set of headlights on a car, amen, and how they had me pinned against that wall, I, I saw some headlights, and, and so the front of that, uh, 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 the, 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 the tires on the front of that car, they bounced up on that sidewalk, and when they bounced up on that sidewalk, uh, uh, on, onto the grass, and, and that vehicle was coming towards us, and, uh, and uh, so that's when uh, I knew something was, something was going on. I just started yelling, you know, kill us, kill us, kill us all. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't care the way they had me in a bind and the way they was doing me. Uh, I wasn't sure who that was, but uh, I didn't care if that car crushed all of us against that wall. But while I was hollering, kill us all, and uh, the horn started blowing, and uh, after that horn started blowing, those men scattered. They went uh, in every direction uh, when that horn started blowing. And so, uh, amen, and that was my chance uh, because uh, when they scattered, amen, I took off toward that car. After it stopped, I took off toward that car, I opened that passenger side, and it was, uh, it was, my, it was my wife, and I was... And she was saying, oh, are you all right? I'm bleeding, you know, everything. It was, it was a messed up situation. And all I could tell her, drive. Get out of here. Just drive, drive, go, leave, you know. And, and, um, and she wanted to see, was I all right? And, and so times went on and things like that. Uh, I knew I was still uh, yet in trouble with the police uh, from a while back ago. So I knew I was going to have to deal with that later on, too. But now this drugs and all this stuff can kind of eased up a little bit. And I've had some time to think about life after this terrible experience, uh, you know, because that was a terrible, that was, that was a terrible one. Hey Amen. Uh, I can't tell you how, how uh, rough that was to experience something like that. Uh, but now it was, now it was time uh, uh, for the devil to start taking him a whooping instead of me taking a whooping because now I'm trying to come out of all this stuff. So I started kind of praying, uh, mostly not for myself, most of it. I started praying for my kids. I didn't want them to wind up going to hell just because of the way I lived and I just figured I was going to hell. And I'm praying, God, don't let them have to go through what I'm going through, what I went through. And what I'm going to don't let them uh, have to go through all that, and uh, and uh, and uh, I didn't I didn't want them you know to be that way, and I didn't want them to have to go through that. Uh, kind of lost respect uh, for my kids for a while, you know, living that way. Uh, my daughter met a Pentecostal boy that started it. I mean, praying, I prayed and prayed a long time, you know, like for my children. And, uh, and so my daughter met this little Pentecostal boy, and, uh, and he'd come by the house, and I thought he was uh, maybe gay or homosexual, though. as nice as he was, a nice young man. He didn't try to hang around the house the wee way I was 12 o'clock for a kiss or, or something like that. It started getting dark. That, you know, that young fellow, was, he, would, he, he would go on, and, and, I, and, I, and, and I really respected him. And he would say sometime, uh, Mr. Bo, you still smoking cigarettes? I said, yeah. He said, God going to deliver you. And I wonder what that boy talking about, you know what I mean? And I never heard him curse or, or do like any of the others. And so, so he was a nice young fellow. And so later on, they got married. Uh, they started, uh, my daughter was doing, doing so much better. She got the Holy Ghost over at that Pentecostal church that that young fellow went to. And so uh, they started uh, asking me if I wanted to go to prayer in the mornings with them, and, and, you know, that's kind of what started this. Hey, man, you see, it's time for the devil to take a whooping song now. Amen. Yes. Hey, and so uh, 
Uh, I said, yeah, I asked them one time. They say 6 o'clock, and I just wasn't ready for that one. But I did it anyway for a week, and, and, I, and, I, and I'd go pray with them. And, and the first day, uh, I remember him uh, on my shoulder, Brother Bo, Brother Bo, uh, it's time, you know, it's time to go because I didn't feel asleep praying. Second day, I may have stayed a little longer, and he'll wake me up this time. But I remember that last day, that Friday, I prayed a whole hour. I was so excited about it. Uh, Brother Billy Mack, I was so excited about it. Hey, Amen. I went and, and I was telling my brother and my sisters about it. I was telling my mom and dad about how I, I've been praying a whole week. It's just been so great. And you must have been over there messing with them crazy folks. You've been hanging around with them, you know, and things like that. Things of that sort, but uh, but God was really dealing with me, and so uh, after that, uh, you know, my life began to change a little bit. You know, you know, uh, uh, I began to do a little better. But keep in mind that, you know, I hadn't taken care of this police deal. I hadn't taken care of this charge and all this stuff that I had gotten into long ago. I'm skipping a whole lot of this lifestyle, amen. That I was living, uh, and so uh, and so. Uh, now uh, I'm waiting to, to uh, serve and to know God better is what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve God and get to know him better now. So that the, this, uh, this was my prayer now. Uh, God, I want to get to know you better. I want to serve you. Uh, uh, put me in a place to where I can get to know you better. Uh, you know, I'm not doing good out here, so, you know, and I really want to know better things about God, but I know he was dealing with me. So now, uh, Brother uh, MacDougall, there was no more drinking, and there was no more doing drugs, and, and, uh, and uh, God was really working uh, with me now, and I was so grateful for that. But, and remember of these police again. Uh, I'm still not out of my troubles, but I had forgotten it. It's what I did. I had kind of forgotten about that because I'm doing so well and God is blessing me and things is going uh, real smooth now. And so uh, it was time uh, for me to pay back. And, uh, and so it was time for me to pay back and, I was, and it was time for me to be tested. It was in 1999. Uh, my daughter and my son-in-law uh, they took me uh, to the church in Sheridan, Arkansas. And uh, so I went to that church with them, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the man was preaching there. Brother Parker was his name, and he was preaching. He was preaching hard. And uh, I remember him standing up on the pew in front of me. He pointed his finger down uh, toward my face, and he said, uh, uh, you need to know that you can't live like hell and expect to go to heaven. And boy, he was putting it on. I mean, he was preaching it hard. I was saying to myself, if I catch you out in the street, there's going to be something talking to me like that. You know what I mean? But, you know, that was just one of them things. And I didn't like that. So uh, I went on home, and, and, and I wasn't planning on going back, but God was dealing with me. You get back in there. This is where I want you to be at. You go learn some more. You take whatever it is. And, you know, it wasn't nothing too hard from how I had already lived for the devil. You know, and 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 and, and uh, God was doing things in my life. Well, for one thing, He saved my daughter. He was just doing one thing after another for me, Amen. one thing after another for me, showing me the goodness, Amen, of God. And so uh, I got uh, I got rebaptized in the name of Jesus. Mind you, I didn't get the Holy Ghost uh, right off. Uh, then I realized I did have the promise of the Holy Ghost. I didn't get it when I got baptized in Jesus' name, but uh, I wasn't going to stop until I got it, and I knew it was promised to me, so I stood on that promise. So uh, me uh, asking God to put me somewhere where I can get to know him better, uh, uh, here come these police after a while, and, and that's what it was. I had to go to court. I had to go through all that. So I went on uh, to prison. Uh, 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 to uh, complete uh, my boot camp training and uh, to understand what the Lord would have me uh, to do. It was like boot camp, the prison was for me. And, uh, and uh, it wasn't 
too hard right at the middle of serving my time, but I didn't like it. I was telling God, you got it all messed up. I told you to put me somewhere where me and you can get to know each other. Why you do this? Why you put me here? I want to get to know you. And, and God was saying, I, I got you where I want you. See, I had learned to listen to, I, I, could, I had learned the difference now listening to the devil and the difference in listening to the Lord. And so uh, I knew I was in the right place, but I didn't understand why. And I was just telling God, I don't know why you put me here, Lord. This just don't seem like it's right. And, and, uh, and, uh, and so God was letting me know. He said, I'm locking you up that you be able to free others. And I, I, I understood that a little bit, and I knew I had to go uh, through something. And that was my boot camp time, amen, to uh, get to know God better. So when that was over, so in about June of 2000, I came, uh, I came out of prison, uh, and I had great family support. I had, I, had, I had great family support. My family was there for me. And it was because that they knew the change. They knew how I was uh, before I, you know, before my change. They knew exactly how I was. And so they knew it had been some change about me since I had been with my daughter and learning more about God. I wasn't drinking no more and wasn't doing drugs. And so, so when I came out, yes, sir, I had great support. And, uh, you know, like I say, it's funny uh, sometimes when everybody else know uh, that there's a calling on your life except you. Everybody can see something about you that God is doing except you. So, I, I, mean, I mean, I didn't see it. And I was always afraid of it anyway. When God got to really uh, dealing with me to do something, I was always uh, uh, trying to make an excuse. God, you got the wrong one. I believe it's my brother you're after. He's the good guy, you know. And I'm the, you know, oh, I'm the bad guy. I'm the one that do the dope. You know, I'm the one that did all the drugs and things like that. It's my brother that you want, and uh, and and uh, that wasn't so. God would let me know you the one. You the one. So he had the right one. And uh, after a while being uh, out, things was kind of settling down. And so my daughter and my son-in-law, uh, they uh, came and talked with me. And uh, they was telling me that they had the perfect place uh, that I could go to. Amen. To, uh, to get to know God better. And uh, I felt okay with that. So I told them, okay. Uh, and now it's time for the Holy Ghost. It's time to really get this thing to going right now. And uh, it was like a wall had been built up for so long in my life. It seemed like it was about time for it to be torn down. And so uh, uh, they was talking about we going out to go ride a horse horses, and we're gonna go ride horses, and then we'll come on back and. And uh, they was going to introduce me to this person, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, where they was talking about me maybe staying and, and getting to know God better without a lot of uh, disturbance. And we was going down the road, and, and we turned off that pavement onto a dirt road, and I knew I was in trouble. When they turned off that uh, hard pavement road, I said, God, no. He said, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we got down to the end of that dirt road. And there it was, uh, a man, a 40-acre ranch, a man, and that was uh, where Pastor Parker was at that ranch that uh, became Winsong Ranch. And, uh, and we talked, and, and I sit there. He showed me the pictures of, 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 of where I was baptized in Jesus' name in his church and, and things like this, and, and we talked. So we went and, and, and rode horses. Me and the Everardo family, it was the Everardo family was there. Amen, that's where I met them at. And we went and rode horses. And my son-in-law and daughter stayed there. But we went and rode horses, and when we got back, they were gone. They done left me there, brother. They done left me there. And so I'm saying, well, they'll be back for me, you know. And uh, he said, well, you could just spend the night. And I was telling him, no, 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 I don't, I, I don't have any clothes or anything like that. Either. He said, well, I got clothes to fit you. And so, and so I stayed a night. And, uh, 
And uh, then he talked me into staying another night. And I stayed uh, another night. And so uh, now, uh, you know, things is getting to be, you know, uh, I, I, I didn't stay a few nights. But this is the place to where, you know, I began to get visions of standing before men to do things. And, and, and now God is really working on me. And I remember uh, 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 this, these, these visions of uh, always being before me and, and, and uh, talking with them. And I, rem I, re I remember in that vision of building a, a house, amen. And so we agreed, you know, I went on back home, and, uh, uh, and so I went back to stay. And uh, when I had come out of prison, it, like I say, it wasn't long. It, it wasn't long. And so when I, I agreed with him that I had stayed six months to a year, to help, uh, you know, like around the place with other people and things like that. And so uh, when I got back there after a few days of going home, uh, God uh, compelled me to go back and, and stay and do whatever the man of God say do. And that was one of the things I was telling God. You know, why ain't I got the Holy Ghost? Because I stayed after the Holy Ghost the whole time I was incarcerated. I stayed after the Holy Ghost when I came out of prison. I stayed at it. And I didn't want to uh, let that go. I was going to get the Holy Ghost regardless. I told God, I, I'm going to wear you down until you give me the Holy Ghost. And so uh, when I got back, I slept on the couch there. Well, camp meet came around. So when camp meet came around, it was in Redfield. And so we, we went to camp meet. And so uh, it, it, was, it was on a Monday. And... Uh, Pastor Parker got sick, and he told him, he said, I want y'all to finish taking him to the camp meet for the rest of this week, take him, take him to revival. And so they did. And you know, they shake you, and they'll say, let it go, and they'll say, hold on a little bit. And this had been going on for a long time with me. I hadn't got the Holy Ghost yet, but I was after it. And uh, that Friday, I had, I had already talked to God that, that Thursday night when I left. I say, Lord, I'm not going up there. Because, oh, man, his hands was crippled. And he, uh, he was there every night praying with me. I always knew when he walked up when my eyes was closed. I knew it was him because I could feel his hands. Amen. And so uh, that Friday night, I was determined I wasn't going to move unless God moved me. Now, that Friday night, uh, it was uh, Brother Ariar preached that night. I didn't, I didn't know very much about Pentecost. I was just coming into it. And my son-in-law preached over where the youth was. He preached the youth. Amen. And uh, so they got through preaching. Uh, Brother Everyall got through preaching that night. And uh, they was having altar call like they always do. I was at the back, very back. And uh, music was going, and he, he starts saying, stop the music, stop the music, stop the music. And uh, so they stopped the music, and he was saying, I, I said, stop the music. Don't stop praying. Keep praying. He says, somebody in there want the Holy Ghost more than anything. If you get down to this front, he said, God going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And so uh, I knew that was my cue right then. I knew it was my cue. So uh, I broke through the crowd from the back where I was. I walked over wife. I walked through everybody. And I got down there. And just as I crossed that line where that first pew was, there was that old man standing there with them hands, crippled like that. And he had a friend that was a sheriff. And he said, where you been? Where you been? He's here. He's here. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. And when I stepped across there, my brother, I threw up my hands and I started speaking in tongues. Amen. Amen. I couldn't turn it off. I couldn't control it. And I just went on and on with that. I was just, amen. Uh, hallelujah. I had been waiting all that time. All that time. And I don't know how long we was there. Amen. Uh, still. Uh, speaking in tongue and having service, and they singing. And uh, things finally settled down. And I was going over next door uh, to where my daughter was and my son-in-law. And when I opened that door and, and stepped in, my son-in-law just, he knew. And my, when my daughter turned, they knew. She knew. They knew I had gotten the Holy Ghost. Amen. And uh, I got on back to the ranch Amen. that night. And... Uh, even the pastor knew. 
Amen. As sick as he was, he knew. I told him, I said, I got that Holy Ghost now. I got that Holy Ghost. And things started then, Brother Billy. Amen. Uh, when I uh, uh, started staying at that ranch, my son-in-law was doing the jail ministries. And God immediately put me, he immediately put me to work. Amen. I was going to the Fordyce jail uh, along with him. I testify every time I go. He would have me testify. He preaching. Folk get the Holy Ghost and speak in tongue. We go back the next week. We go back on the weekend and baptize them. We was baptizing them in a, a horse trough. And so uh, we start having church. And uh, oh Lord, uh, and uh, I told the that pastor one time we was coming back through the gate. And I told him, this is where I had to visit the bill of place. And he said, uh, he said, well, we're going to, well, that's what we're going to do. He had had the same vision that I had had. He had the same vision. When he mentioned it to the people, some of them just said, no, we're not going to be building no place for no uh, drug addicts and homeless people. So a lot of them left. But when I told him about my vision, it was the same vision that he had. And uh, that night we went to church, he told them. He announced it, that I had the same vision that he had and that we was going to start billing the next day. And that's what he did. Amen. Gave me their credit cards. I started getting stuff. Long story short, and brother, we started billing. Uh, he had this big old block. I had to put that corner block down. Amen. I put that stone down. He asked me, which way you want the house? How you want it? Which way you want it? And, you know, and uh, we did all that. And, uh, and now we didn't have... Uh, very much material. Uh, they didn't even want me coming back to Pine Bluff to get material anymore, using them people's uh, credit cards. It was a man at the church. He said, I got land. If y'all cut the trees off the land, he said, it's a lumber. Y'all place just right down the street from me. You can have them to cut them boards for you. And we did all that, and it was just going just like how God wanted it. It was going just like he wanted it. We was up early every morning, me and them guys, amen, and uh, giving them Bible studies. And it was just one thing. After another, brother, I got into that jail ministry. Amen. We'll go down there, Sister Essie and a few other people that was coming from the First Pentecostal Church to come down with me. They'll go to them jails with me uh, over there at that Ford Ice place. And, and I had that jail to do, and I'd come back, and uh, Sheridan Jail opened up for me, the door opened there. Amen. And, and people was coming from First Pentecostal Church. I didn't understand those guys. Amen. Backsliding like that. I didn't know nothing about backsliding. All I knew was upsliding. Amen. Getting to know God and getting the Holy Ghost and doing whatever. And I questioned them about life. And they'll tell me how they was raised and how good it was in the, you know, like uh, 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 being grown up in, in, in a Pentecostal church and in a holy home and things like this. And it was just something else. They didn't like what I was doing. But when they took to it, they'd be back home. They'd be back at the church. Amen. Renewed in the Holy Ghost. Ooh, thank I never you, Lord. Did, I never did know Bishop at the time, but I got to know uh, Mother you, Agnes Holm. She came down one day, and I escorted her up those stairs. It's what I done. And, and uh, she about shook me. Uh, I ain't going to say half the death, but she shook some Holy Ghost on me the night she came, and she preached that night. Uh, 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 the best deal in town. I'll never forget it. And so my life went on. As years passed, we finally got that house built. Uh, we bought another house, and uh, God was just doing all kind of magnificent things. It wasn't very long after that, God picked me up and put me on a pew at the First Pentecostal Church. I got there. I started in ministry some more. I started with the bus ministry with Brother Van Blakely. Amen. I went on to prison. Uh, ministry to preach there with some of the brothers. Uh, I went on into the jail, Pulaski jail, preaching there, and God has did uh, more for me than anything. Just one thing after another, one thing after another. And here I am now at the age of 65. I remember back a few years ago, a man in 2016, a man, I had a heart attack, and I went through a quadruple bypass, and I was on that table, and the devil was saying, oh yeah, you didn't did all this time. Working for the Lord now, you better die. Yeah, oh, it's all over. You should have just went on and kept life like you was. It's been 20-some years with this Holy Ghost, amen. And I was just, oh, I was in a wreck, amen. But I was just one God. 
Amen. I want them to know, God, if I'm not done with my work, uh, uh, I ain't ready to go. But if you see that I'm done, it'll be all right. And I went through that, and God brought me out of it. Amen. And I'm still here doing. Amen. Amen for the Thank Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I went over in Little Rock and worked uh, three, four houses there with men from the church and men coming from everywhere. Hallelujah. Uh, suffering with drugs and alcohol and things like this. And God has really blessed me. Amen. Ain't nothing like. Amen. Amen. Uh, seeing the fruit of your labor. And, uh, if I give anybody anything, uh, keep doing for the Lord. God can take care of any matter. Amen. I like to close with I met a man one time after I got in the Holy Ghost and I was at that ranch uh, doing what I was doing, helping people. It seemed like I was hated for that, especially being in Sheridan, Arkansas. And I, a truck driver came through one, time, one night and uh, I didn't know him. And uh, he came to service that night and he said, uh, is you Bo Cole? I said, yes, I am. He said, I heard about you. He said, uh, you took my place. I said, sir. He said, yeah. He said, see, I was asked to do this, and I was called to do this, and I left. And here you is. And you took my place. And uh, I was telling him, well, it's room at the cross. Come on, brother, and we can work this together. You know what I mean? And... Uh, and uh, as time passed, uh, I remember a lot of people saying, you ain't going to last. You ain't going to make it. But God had another plan. I'm still here, devil. You're still alive. Well, we just thank y'all. Thank you, brother, so much. And, and I know you've been blessed today. And we're going to invite our pastor in. He's going to sing a song, and it's called Worth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleared me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free I could be
sacrifice 